This morning says that government pays $275 million. Uh, that's additional $45 million released for standing commitments. This is the uh, $1 million per constituency promise. That's the big one on the finder. Uh, uh, daily graphic puts it this way. Development authorities to disperse $1 million for constituency. Uh, if you take a look at the guide, daily guide, it says government releases $275 million to constituencies. Daily Graphic, apart from that story, has taken charge of destiny. President urges Africans. The president uh, met the uh, president. Uh, Akufadu met uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, of France, and that's the outcome. And uh, the African Trade Secretariat game, Changer, the trade minister, is talking there. We'll take a look at that story. And GES implements new curriculum come September. The BNFT says 283 million city judgment debts paid in three years. About 400 million still outstanding. That's the story. And William is, uh, mansions on sale to public. Uh, the big one on the daily uh, guide. If you take a look at the finder, uh, also has the journalist uh, torture, national security, IGP, AG sued, and Ghana cannot achieve peace in a polarized environment. Those are some of the stories I have with me this morning. I get to do the talking. A member of the NDC's uh, team, Godwin Eduji Tamakrosye. Good morning. Yes, Hope uh, you're right, doing sir. good. Good morning and mm. good morning to Malene Senior uh, Afenio. Mm. Grateful. Uh, your Grateful for your time with us. An MP for uh, Ifutu, a member of the NPP. Honorable Alexander Fair Martin. Good morning, too. Yeah, morning. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, great. Mm. Okay. Good yeah, morning to all, everybody. Including our viewers, I think uh, your people did a follow up on the defecation, open defecation yes, at the yes, beach. Yes, yes, uh, uh, Over the weekends, appears people mm. are scared now. They don't mm. want to be uh, captured by cameras again. Uh, cameras again. <laughs> so, well, it's good for us, and uh, I hope that people all over the country stop this open defecation at our beaches. Grateful. Our prize that those uh, toilet facilities are completed to allow. Uh, uh, people the, the chance to have a decent place. The hashtag is garbage out. You can be part of the conversation. Now, let's start the conversation with this story. If we take a look at page 16 of the Daily Graphic, um, the Minister of Finance has granted letters of commencement to the three development authorities to commence the full implementation of the one million per constituency pledge under the infrastructure for poverty eradication program, that's the IPEP, IPEP for the 2020 fiscal year. The commencement certificate makes available 1.66 billion uh, cities. That's equivalent of $320 million for the 275 constituencies across the country. This covers $275 million for the 275 constituencies and $45 million for outstanding commitment. The IPEP, commonly known as $1 million per constituency, is a government initiative aimed at meeting critical infrastructure needs identified by local actors at the constituency level. That's the story. Uh, uh, we're told that a lot more is being done to ensure that these um, uh, monies go into the right place. The IPEP is under the office of the president and supervised by the minister responsible for special in initiatives. Uh, we're told that infrastructure projects to be implemented will support and complement other government infrastructure projects. On our your market, uh, uh, let's, let me start the conversation. So, we... The, the, word, the word talk about the money is not going. The finance minister says now we're, we're starting to disperse the money, including the ones that have been outstanding. Um, as far as the constituencies are concerned, how well would this speed up development? Well, uh, right, morning once again. Um, I think at long last, we have seen another major promise being fulfilled. Um, for those of us who have been part of the local government uh, governance machinery, uh, the experience has been that funds are often disbursed at the national level and sometimes procurements are done 
and items are brought. So as an assembly, you don't really control what you want to do. You do your budget, but eventually uh, local government would uh, dictate to you what you should do. Mm. So when this idea of one million per constituency uh, came up during the manifesto drafting, I was one person who wholeheartedly, who embraced it wholeheartedly, because at least it was going to bring the, rev uh, the resources directly to the assembly. And mind you, at the assembly level, the assembly members don't receive common fund or whatever. Yet, in their various communities, people depend on them for development. They mm. expect them to advocate. They expect them to fix street lights and all that. So to me, that idea of getting the funds directly to the various constituencies would mean that the MP, the M M M M C or the DC with the assembly members, as well as other stakeholders, mm. can critically look at their developmental needs. The funds have come. You will now sit down and then identify areas that will help develop your constituency. You disperse directly. Then also it will help boost the local economy. If you have control over your own resources, you can now grow the local entrepreneurs, give them opportunities, the local content that it has, um, it has, it, as it has become known, that you now would nurture some ambitious entrepreneurs, people would be willing to undertake jobs, supplies, and all that. You know, at the end of the day, the very development that people uh, are looking up to will be at their doorstep. Mm. Now, people did not understand. In Parliament, some of our colleagues last year were saying that, oh, why don't you disperse the money? The president's uh, position, and of course that of the government, was that, look, let's set up the legal framework. You need a law to back whatever that you're going to do. So let's have the various development uh, authorities work through them so that we can disperse. Now, if you have the proposals, maybe the assembly may not have the, 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 the technical know-how. You need to also get it through the developmental authorities mm. for them to assess, work with them. Then you are good to go. So I think that um, Ghanaians would now begin to realize that, look, this government really meant business. Because you see, we had our friends who were in office for eight years. We came in with our own vision. One was a free SHS. The president did not uh, uh, defer it. He didn't say, oh, give me one year to roll it out. That one was immediate. There were two other areas of great concern to Ghanaians. The teacher training allowance thing, that was restored. The nursing training allowance, that was restored. Then again, on the issue of unemployment, government immediately rolled out the NAPCO. One may talk about delays in the payment of allowances and all that. But today, you have over 100,000 Ghanaian youth who otherwise will be sitting at home being employed. If you go to Ghana Revenue Authority, you find them there. If you go to GS, they are there. The, the, the health uh, model, nurses who were staying at home, at least those who were engaged. Last year, some of them were employed into the mainstream uh, Ghana Health uh, Service uh, recruitment program. And they are part of the Ghana Health Service now. Others are still within the NAPCO and they will get the opportunity. If you also look at the, the planting for food and jobs, that was also one major step taken by government to also address the unemployment situation. So you realize that all in all, the framework is being put in place. Things are being rolled out so that um, people would not think that, oh, it was mere political promise. But today, you can attest to it. I am sure that come September, October, mm. constituencies will see projects. People would see jobs. Then they would know that, oh, the government meant business. It was not just 
merely talking about it, but this thing has also been rolled out and then we are seeing. Let's even talk about utility. It was one major promise made by this government, then in opposition, uh, MPP, that look, we would address it because Ghanaians are paying too much. Industry received almost 30% reduction. It was announced. Households received 17% reduction. It was announced. People felt it. It's, I mean, it was real. It's, whereas our friends in government have said, oh, this is impossible. We can't do it. And even if you look at the recent uh, increment that was announced, mm -hmm. you realize that if you are matching it, it's still cheaper because you got a reduction of 17%. There's an increase of 11%. Then you are still having savings. If you come to industry, the same thing. So, I think, given the opportunity, if this uh, MPP gets eight years, like what NDC had, you would see the real difference. Like people have been talking about the Kufo era, the first eight years that MPP had. The major social intervention programs that were rolled out are still with us. Compared to the NDC's first eight years from 92 to 2000, where they could not talk about a single social intervention program, they are successfully rolled out. Look at the second opportunity they had from 2009 to 2016, the eight years. Ask yourself, is there any social intervention program they initiated and implemented successfully that they were able to sustain? None. I mean, the facts are there. Well, according to you, none. Or you well, know, my it's colleague, a fact. It is a fact. I've raised okay. this in several yeah, times. Yeah, my so colleague is yeah, here. I, I said I'll get you the a single social intervention program initiated, implemented, sustained. They should give me one. And I've told you that they had 92 to 2000. They are 2009 to 2016. Mm. So altogether 16 years. The NDC machinery should tell Ghanaians a single social intervention program they initiated, okay, wrap implemented, up and sustained successfully. So I'm saying that the government is committed to the development of the people. This government is more than determined. This government is more than determined to make good its campaign promises. And over time, you see it. All the criticisms, okay. people talking about it, it is still focused I'm grateful. and it will deliver. I'm grateful. <laughs> Right. Energy. So uh, right. th that's uh, that's uh, the news so far. Uh, the story is fact, that uh, uh, you say, right? Mm. You should not even worry yourself. I think that honest leadership is what we are lacking in this country, especially this administration. Beyond the incompetence, one expects certain level of honesty with the very people of this country. Look, the vice president today. Dr. Mohamed Baumia went to Walewale Wale during the 2016 campaign and made it very clear that money stay here in Accra. Quote, and people steal it and take it to Burkina Faso and Dubai. And that with the benefit of power, they are going to give the monies to the constituencies mm. for the constituencies to decide what they want to use the money for. I want to submit on this platform that the bulk of the projects, that includes water closets, mechanized boreholes, highly inflated mechanized boreholes, were all procured from the office of the vice president, Dr. Mohamed Baumia. So when Malene Senior sits here and puts it, that these monies are no longer centralized. It's a big fat untruth. I wouldn't say a lie. Because the procurement of the boreholes, the, the ambulances, were all done here in the office of the vice president. So in fact, it's not a constituent. No. No money. No one million dollar had been given to any constituency whatsoever in this country. What they have done is to sit here in Accra and decide that my constituency, Domi Kwabenya, we need a WC. 
We need mechanized borehole. We need ambulance. And so they are procuring these services here in Accra. They have not come to Dome Kwabenya to say, Dome Kwabenya, what is your immediate need? Or to go to Inquanta South, to ask the people in Inquanta South, what is your immediate need? Maybe the, the MP, together with the DC, the chiefs, can meet and say, look, we need so so and so in Kerry. In Bonache, this is what we need. When you come to Damanko, this is what we need. Persons within the vice president office, together with the ministry, sat down and decided for themselves that, look, we think you need a, a mechanized borehole. We think you need WC. And procure those services at highly inflated prices. First of all, that's if a, you and I'm coming, I know I'm coming. If you recall, getting to the 2016 election, my own good friend, Sir John, had a hurriedly organized press conference and accused the previous administration of doing a mechanized borehole by the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission at the cost of 60,000 Ghana cities. Today, the borehole is being constructed under this dubious scheme. It's 132,000 Ghana cities. That's highly inflated. If 60,000, there was accusation of inflation, the 132,000 cannot be less. Two, we were in this country where they came out and said, look, if you are constructing six unit classroom block costing 500,000 Ghana cities, it's inflated. Today, under this dubious scheme, Six unit classroom is costing 770,000 Ghana cities, 200,000 Ghana cities more when inflation appears to be single digit. Beyond that, ask my learned senior here how much is the price of one ambulance that they are procuring? How much is the cost of the WC? And these things are centralized. It is not like you go to the assemblies or you go to the various communities and ask them what do they want so that it will be a community-based, community-initiated project. No, they sat here in Accra, put up their own procurement schemes, procure this at highly inflated prices. And look, look, if I tell you the circumstances under which people get these contracts, it's shocking. And so when I hear, I, I want to give my senior here the benefit of the doubt that he doesn't know what is going on in the ministry. And as an MPP communicator, he needs to put up this performance. I want to give him that benefit of the doubt. But I am telling him that first of all, this service, you recall that it is the same special initiatives that they were going to do a, a, a website for over 800,000, but for the vigilance of the minority in parliament, that they had to quickly reduce the cost of that. That has been the very, you know, behavior relative to this. So when today the newspaper, and you can see, it's a very organized headline. When they say an amount of one billion had been sent to the various assembly, it's a fat lie. This government is only engaged in deception, complete scam. You see, Bright, my little senior sits here and says, oh, uh, this government had come out with social intervention. Sometimes, I don't know whether it is the question of mischief, propaganda, or just throwing dust. What in the first place is social intervention? Ordinarily, you expect the private sector or individuals to provide for themselves what they need. So when government intervene to do that which ordinarily will be done by you, it is called social intervention. That is what it is. So when you come and there is OSA, you collapse it and you set up a different entity called Metro Mass. You say you have introduced. First of all, by the time the Jerry Rawlings administration left office, we had a district assembly common fund, that side constitutionally provided for. 
Then we came out with the Ghana Education Trust Fund. We came out with value added. When we decided to do value added, the MPP then engaged in Kumi Prekun, led by the current president. He never knew that NHIS, okay, National Health Insurance, 2.5% anchored on value.